Hey friends, welcome to episode 3 of Origami Review, and this video is coming out a little bit later because we're quite busy, but we're still going to go over some cool folds from this week. Let's get into it. Alright, so um, let's go over some folds, and then at the end of this video, we have some news type stuff, I guess. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get into it. Let's see what happened this week. So again, starting off with Hall of Fame. Let's check it out. Looks like there's a lot of conversation. Ooh, here we go. So Arisawa Yuga looks like this is his new dragon. And I know he came out with a book recently. Um, so if you're interested with that, I know that this is diagrammed in there. So um, I'll have the link for his Instagram in the description. And then I believe his book link is somewhere on his Instagram. But yeah, wow, that's a really cool dragon. You got some color change for the wings. I love the head structures he has. If you're not familiar with one of his other dragons that was very popular um, earlier in the year, a lot of people were folding it, uh, but there's a lot of room for shaping. And it kind of has its own unique taste in you know, the styling of the wings and the styling of the horns. Um, looks pretty cool. Uh, this fold looks like it was folded with a smaller sheet of paper. So you, know, you don't have to use some crazy large paper and you can still get really nice results looks really really cool um and you know structures like this um for a dragon are just really really fun to fold so this is cool this is really cool oh, even a little color change to the eye i like that i'm thinking of purchasing that book <laughs> i i love dragons um as y'all probably know um let's see what else we got Ooh, okay so this is a dung beetle and let's see if we have the designer up here before we go into it, um, origami underscore Kimiro. And this is a beetle called Scarabaeus Sacer, which I'm probably not pronouncing, um, but all oh, this is really cool. So I'm going to call it a dung beetle because I, th I think that's what it's supposed to be, but it's the beetle with, you know, the ball all in one. So look at that. So one, the beetle has a lot of detail, you know, for being just a small portion of the paper. What I've learned from doing some box plate insects is you don't re you really don't need a huge grid to get all the structures of a beetle. Um, it's pretty simple. And then it's attached to the the end here. Um, so and then here's some progress photos of just like how it was constructed. So that's super cool. So um, it looks like you know you fold the beetle and then you just have all this paper to to shape into a ball. This is super creative. Um, even has the crease pattern for us. Wow, so that's really neat. And yeah, yeah, kind of like what I was saying. You know, you don't need a lot of grid space to get a full beetle out. Um, that is, that's a great dung beetle. I've, I've seen a couple in the past, but it's not as common. So this is really neat to see. And oh, that, that's, that's just great. This is really cool. Love the creative taste, you know. Um, I, I, I always think origami where there's more than one object um, is super cool when it can like blend together. Uh, very, very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I've seen the fold of this before, but um, Paper Forger just posted it on Instagram. So let's check this out. This is designed by Paper Forger, um, super talented folder from Australia. And this was a submission for one of the Origami Dan competitions in the back. Um, it, it's a tree, but it's super, super detailed. So you can see you got birds here, you got leaves, you got branches of various lengths. He shaped it super, super nicely. Like the a lot of the clean edges here um, just look like tree branches. It's it's amazing. You know, you don't see a whole bunch of like layers squished together. It just it looks naturally like trees. You know, there's thicker parts of the branches. They're spiky. Um, they're really sharp. This is one of my favorite tree models out there. And I love how he incorporated birds into the leaves. Like, that's so much detail. It's so cool. Um, photography game on point with the dark coloring. Really like uh, this kind of trend coming. Um, I know some people in the Origami Dan Discord have been teaching uh, how to do this. So that's, that one again, that's, that's another reason to join the Discord, you know, and get that knowledge. Um, but yeah, just look, look at this detail. I love these extra photos that he included into his post. 
yeah, just just look at that. You know, got leaves. It's like that's it's absolutely absolutely stunning. And this bird is oh, it's so nice. It's like kind of like a cardinal, I guess, but we got two different birds here. Super creative, kind of similar to what I just said about you know taking an origami subject and including other subjects into the model. Super super cool. Um, it's got a rough skeleton of the crease pattern here, um, so there's quite quite a massive grid as you can imagine. That's what it that's what it takes to make something like this. Um, super super cool. I absolutely love this design. This is absolutely amazing. Well done, Paper Forger. Um, Paper Forger also has a bunch of other cool folds on his Instagram, so make sure you guys check it out. It's gonna be linked in the description as well as everyone else's, um, you know, links. All, all everything you see here will be linked below. Um, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> next up, we have another amazing fold. So this is by Origami underscore DRW, and this is the Quail Skeleton designed by K Watanabe. Um, if Y'all are familiar with Kay's work. They're super like organic. Um, they're normally pretty crazy folds or designs. Um, and this quail skeleton is considered to be, you know, very challenging. If if you look at the rough crease pattern, um, it's not fully complete, but you can tell it's it's pretty 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 crazy. I, I think it's something like a 96 diagonal grid. Um, not exactly sure, but super super cool and then it makes the skeleton really detailed one thing i really love about this design is that the head is made up of a bunch of like components of like flaps and you know shaped like smaller flaps it's it's more complicated than just what i would do if i was designing it and just have like three flaps to make up the head um, and that really adds like the dimension like you're looking through the skeleton so i really love that uh, Origami DRW did an amazing job on the paper choice. This is super, super cool. You know, well, one, it's kind of bone colored, but the texture, it just adds a lot to it. Absolutely amazing. Uh, once again, photography is spot on. The rib cage is shaped very nicely. Um, this kind of stuff is hard because those flaps are all in the middle, so that's going to be some of the thicker ends um, of the paper, or at least I think they're from the middle. Um, but yeah, yeah, so amazing job. All angles of this thing, super, super cool. Definitely a Hall of Famer. Um, wow, this is this is neat. Looks like it took 25 hours to fold, 70 centimeter mulberry, about. Makes a lot of sense. Awesome, awesome fold. Um, and, ooh, oh, yes, yes, okay. I saw this one earlier in the week. Glad I scrolled up to it. So this is the fold of Kamiya Satoshi's Phoenix, which I'm sure you're all very aware of, with the three tail modification. So there have been a bunch of these, or not too many, there's been a couple of these um, Phoenixes out there. And just because of you know the concept, it, there's a lot of speculation um, about these specific folds, but this one is, I want to say it's like the most legit or it's like the most well communicated version of this model um it looks like he included the crease pattern here um so this will be linked below uh, it looks like he drew it himself so if you're familiar with the phoenix it's basically just this quadrant and the structure is actually fairly simple um you know this portion's the tail so you know, there's been, it can be extrapolated once you understand some crease patterns that, hey, you can make three tails by increasing, um, or actually by just having a triangle um, initially. So if you have the triangle here, then each corner would be a tail, and then you'd have the one in the middle. Um, obviously, folders, we want to fold from a square. So if you do a square, uh, you have basically this other half that you could just either fold in half. Um, and then treat it like a triangle. Or you can do just like a little bit with it to, to add some more detail, or there's a, there's a lot of options you can do. And it looks like what, um, I believe this is uh, Fernando. Uh, yes, yes, Fernando Chura, he, he, this is his fold. And his drawing of the crease pattern is he took the top portion, made a bunch of other feathers by just having a sequence of middle flaps. Um, to add just even more detail. Just, there's a lot of paper, you know, you don't want exactly to waste it uh, so why not so let's take a 
good look at this. Um, this is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, 130 centimeter paper. That sounds about right for this model as it's going to be very thick. But, oh man, three-tailed phoenix. Um, this is definitely like my favorite edition rendition of this because of how much time uh, Fernando took to, to show, you know, this is the way he did the three tails. Ah, this is so cool. Look, so tons of feathers. These tails are super clean. Oh, just look at that. And it doesn't even look very thick up in the middle because in the middle, it, it's supposed to be relatively, relatively thick. Um, and let's, let's see if he has an angle on those feathers. Yes, so here, these are the sequence of extra tail feathers that he added. Oh, this is so cool. If I if I ever pulled one of these, I think I'll I'll do the rendition he did cuz this is this is super super cool. Love those extra tail feathers. It adds a lot to the phoenix. Um yeah, wow. This is this is just amazing. Um the pose is is great. You know, this is the very typical, you know, clawed phoenix pose. It's mid-air. It's looking really cool. Look how sharp these talons are phenomenal phenomenal shaping all around if this was just a regular phoenix it would already be very insane but it's got three three tails um looks like the editing for the the display stand is right there but yeah oh man look just look three tail three tail phoenix you know this is this is really cool to see fantastic job fernando this is this is beyond amazing I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm like speechless. Like, this is so cool. Um, well, if you ever wanted to do the three-tailed Kamiya Satoshi Phoenix, this is, this is the way to go. Uh, and since he's allowed us, or he posted the, the crease pattern publicly, of course, link will be in the description for his Instagram. So go check that out. Um, give him props and thank him for <laughs> figuring out that crease pattern. Right, next we have what looks like a Ryujin 2.1. I can kind of tell because of the amount of scales. Um, also, Alio's Craft, amazing choice uh, for 2.1. So I've heard. I have obviously haven't made one myself. Uh, let's see who made this. Um, this is by uh, Ourobros. Uh, <laughs> forgive me if I pronounced that wrong, but I think this is Rose. So very clever name. Um, and let's see, Rose did a great job on this 2.1 this is really really cool um i love it when people don't do the regular fusion shaping i also i don't mind the regular fusion shaping because obviously i did it for mine just the the simple spiral with the head uh peeking over uh, but when people make you know a conscious choice to you know add some creativity uh you know can't go wrong and especially with this one uh, Ouroboros made really nice curves for the Ryujin. You know, there's no sharp edges. It doesn't look like the scales are getting crushed. Um, super, super clean. Excellent, excellent job there. Um, if we just look on, yeah, you can you can tell, like, the whole thing just looks super clean. Uh, the head, head shaping, super nice. All the features are there. You can see the sets of teeth. They're symmetrical. Um, the small details. Um, in the mouth to the whiskers and even the little eye right here fantastic fantastic job you can tell uh, Aros really spent time to get to just nail the 2.1 um, if you saw some of the progress photos from my region you would have known that the unshaped scales were really messy these are super clean so mega props for getting those scales that nice um, that's a task in its own. Um, and then I, I, for the 2.1, the structure of the claws are a little bit different. Uh, so really great job there. Uh, nice shaping, nice sharp claws. Oh yeah, the photography is on point as well. Just check this out. This is a really cool angle. Uh, wow, that, I don't know how I got that angle. That's, that's really cool. Uh, great photography all around. Great folding all around. Yeah, this is, this is an excellent 2.1. Um, really really good job uh, looks like we got some progress photos here and yep yeah yeah so you can you can see the the model was clean before it was even fully shaped um, she really did a good job taking time uh, to ensure this got the clamps and everything uh, <laughs> typical region stuff yeah this this is this is great this this looks really good um, 
very very nice job on this reusion 2.1 uh, yeah this is well well done well well done and let's get one more in here and oh yes yes okay so I think this model I'm not sure if it was on Hall of Fame you know like a month ago um, but it's back up here and for good reason this is the Toto dial designed by Luca or I think it's pronounced Faldumo on the Origami Dan Discord uh, Luca is one of the I believe he started this Discord um, and in its entirety and he designs really well so as you can ch see from this crease pattern that was posted alongside there's some some crazy transition units but the flat folding is there um, it's really well thought out and it resulted in a cool model so you know uh, the base looks just like a blitz bird base but there's a lot of other things going on to to make it really cool so let's check out the model um, I love this model I think it's super cute and while I don't always post like cute origami whenever I see cute origami or anything that screams cute I think it's really cool that you know a piece of paper can kind of translate that reaction um, so this for me I think it's really cute and at the same time it's complexity so it's really cool as well so you know you got a full set of teeth here um, you got the proportions for the arms, <laughs> you even got fingers, you know, you got a really nice, you know, um, spine and tail, you know, got some spikes there. And it's not like a ridiculous crease pattern, or at least it's, it's not box pleat, it's, you know, 22.5 base. So that's like a huge plus for this model. Um, really, really well done. Uh, I love the fact that because it's, um, uh, of I think it's what, what what would this be like closed book uh the belly is color changed because of how the paper um lays when you have the pleats together um i don't know my terminology was correct there but i think you guys understand what i mean where this is there's there's color change because of uh the how the paper lies and it just adds to the model so really well done luca super cool model um doesn't look like the Instagram links here, but I'll link Luca's Instagram so you can see his other folds and other designs. Um, but yeah. All right, so that wraps up the models for this video. Um, got some other things to talk about. One is, um, for the most part, we've been reviewing the Origami Dan Discord, um, which I'm going to continue to do, but I've gotten some recommendations to also check out and feature people on Twitter. Um, you know, there's some, there's a lot of folders on there that we don't get to see very often, um, internationally, um, or just because Twitter isn't the hugest platform uh, for origami. Um, but yeah, there's a lot there. So let me know what kinds of things you guys would like to see, or if there's a specific person um, that you would like me to review. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. Um, for the most part, with these videos, I try to talk with the people I feature uh, beforehand. And so if that was the case, uh, where it's, there, it's not through the Discord, I'll probably reach out to them and ask them and maybe get a few pointers, you know, uh, from then, their end of what they think about their own models. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments or, you know, hit me up with accounts of people that you want me to check out. Um, I'd love to, to feature people and look at some of their really cool folds. Um, but yeah, other than that, other news is next week, uh, I'm not sure if there's going to be an origami review. There, are, there there might be, but I am teaching a class at the Fold Space Origami Convention. Um, I'm specifically teaching on Friday, but the convention runs for three days that weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And this is going to be a really cool online convention because of the consistent quality. Every teacher is going to have uh, relatively the same setup where you'll see diagram steps on board you'll be able to see the face cam it's going to be very interactive um, I think it's going to be a great convention I've been you know working to put together my class so if you want to take my class and I'm teaching this baby octopus uh, feel free to sign up um, see if it's for you and if it's for you I'd love to see you at the convention um, so yeah that's that's happening next week I'm super excited and other than that, we're just going to quickly check out Origami USA's Instagram 
And I'm featuring this because they start restarted hashtag folding Friday, where um, people who tag them or use the hashtag in their posts get featured on their uh, Instagram story. And I thought this was really cool because this is one of the best ways to kind of um, feature, you know, artists. Um, and it could be just anyone on Instagram. And that gets featured and it really can creates like it builds community um, uh, kind of reposting and allowing origami to be shared even more uh, I think the really nice thing about social media is that you know origami can be shared at a mass scale so um, definitely use this hashtag for Fridays uh, if you're thinking about posting on a Friday especially um, on Instagram it'll get uh, shared by origami USA so I think that's pretty cool just wanted to plug that really quick and you guys can get featured there. Um, but yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, thanks for watching and let me know what you guys think of what we should check out next. And I'll see you in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now. I'm